that. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Okay, I'll be sure to shorten that. Nothing bothers socially awkward man. It's minutes to showtime, and these aren't ordinary jitters. Yeah, the folks complained I wasn't getting enough exercise, so I bought a bigger monitor. Michael McQuery paces all the time, cracks his knuckles by his ears constantly. Fixations? He can name a few, but comedy comes first. It's like I'd rather do that than breathe, but it's just, um, um, so there is a fixation in that regard, but I think there's sort of an unhealthy stigma that surrounds that because, uh, I, I keep saying that word because it's just sort of the word that I go back to, but I'd really like to uh, approach it more like a passion or a love because fixation makes it sound unhealthy, you know what I mean? If you haven't clued in yet, there's nothing typical or rather neurotypical about this 20-year-old comic. He's got Asperger's syndrome, a high-functioning form of autism. And while he comes across as exhaustively upbeat, being a social misfit who yearns to connect with those around him is the real story behind his extraordinary shtick. And finally I settled on this whole stand-up thing, which was a difficult call for me because all my life I've had this fear that people were staring at me and laughing. <laughs> Well, I was just trying to channel up, was just uh, kind of feeling like you're drowning, you know, just in, in social situations. I mean, like, I'm an extrovert, and there's nothing worse than feeling like you're surrounded by just people everywhere, and you can't talk or form a, a connection with anyone, you know, and it's tragic, and it's not for lack of trying. Uh, I no, I Asperger's is a social communication disorder. Making small talk, doing this interview, can get his heart pounding. Just making eye contact with me was tough. Nothing's normal. Nothing is normal. This is weird. Like, you know, it's just like that. Like, that's an elephant trunk sticking out of like a metallic, you know. Is this like, weird too? All these questions? Yeah, it's weird that we're sitting here in a room where like these lights can make it so noticeable how much I spit when I talk, you know, like, and that's going to come up on camera. Like, uh, nothing about this is normal. Normally I'm like, like doing this. So, like, I'm just. And that thing he's doing with his leg. Another compulsive tick. He can't help it. He says, like cracking his knuckles, it calms him. As a kid, he couldn't figure out why all those quirks made him a target. When I was a kid, uh, when I hit grade seven, I was ostracized by a group of kids that I thought were my friends, and I've only recently come to terms with the fact that they like they were bullying me. I was that one kid in the group that no one actually liked. You know, I was the whipping post. Absolutely. In, in in grade seven and eight, uh, I think we led the uh, for him. He you know led his class in. Uh, days off for mental health days. His parents, Susan and Doug McCreary, say it was a dark time. I can't send him back into that again today, you know, uh, like to deal with the being, like forget being ostracized, just being totally ignored and uh, not having anybody to connect with. And you had a whole binder that you gave him for this to him? Oh yeah, he's had a binder. Susan and Doug encouraged him to write his feelings in a journal. So it's when the moment strikes. Yeah, yeah, so you know, we're writing down and there's just... Uh, Pretty soon, any scrap of paper would do as something unexpected happened. The pain turned into punchlines. <laughs> this is the start of some. Let me see, neurotypicals, not less, just different. <laughs> Here's a bit that he wrote. I don't think he's ever used this, but it's, uh, I forgot, I don't smoke. Just kidding. <laughs> it's actually my inhaler. I just thought it might look cooler than, you know, well, you know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm Stephen Harper. <laughs> Michael was 14 when he did his first act, and he got hooked. It was recommended that we try and draw the humor from our personal tragedies and shortcomings. So if any one of you has to go to the bathroom, you better go now, because I have eight hours worth of material. <laughs> he realized when he's on stage making fun of himself, he could get the last laugh. Oh, uh, what I get out of it. It's interesting because comedy is one of the only mediums that uh, turns failure into a strength, you know, turns it into a weapon that you can use uh, uh, to entertain people. So it's really, uh, it's amazing that I've just been able to turn like a lot of uh, really sad, some kind of traumatic life experience into something for me that, uh, that people can laugh at, you know. <laughs> Like, uh, does it help you? It does. I think it's a therapeutic experience. When I go out there on stage, it's less so like a comedy show and more like group therapy where everyone else is too polite to tell me to shut up. 
Since then, Michael has performed more than 150 times, mostly at conferences relating to autism, sometimes to huge crowds in the thousands. I love the way that, and I know he does too, the way that the audience responds to it. You know, there's a lot of people who follow him that are also on the spectrum or people who come to shows and it, it helps teach them how to manage it, how to laugh at yourself, how to laugh at other people, or how to laugh at people who laugh at you. For the purposes of this video, I will be referring to people not on the spectrum as neurotypical as opposed to normal. Be it on stage, I mean, on all, social media. What is normal? or even improv. I am a lawn chair. Lawn chair, great. Woo -hoo. Performing is a platform to redefine normal through the eyes of a young man who can connect to a room full of strangers but still struggles to get through a simple greeting. And socks. Bye. Like a simple, yeah, okay, see you later. Could be inferred as like either uh, they hate me or maybe they like me and don't know how to articulate. Maybe they also have Asperger's. I think it's funny just to like have your entire mental state brought down like a house of cards because of something as petty as that. Like I think that's just such a good platform for, for like a, for a joke. <laughs> Until now, that message hasn't really hit the mainstream. Sure, he's paced practiced and performed dozens of times because all my life I've had this fear that people are staring at me but always to captive audiences who get his inside jokes and who can identify with his struggles <clears throat> I lived in Kensington Market for a while uh, a lot of eccentric characters like we had a homeopathic auto mechanic but Michael is eager to take his autistic angst to the next level great to meet you, Mike. welcome to promote his app to a broader audience and carve a place in the so-called normal world he's always wanted to be a part of. And that led you to do some more writing? This month, he got his chance. That is correct. Uh, my social ineptitude stems from uh, being too extroverted, like being too, okay. like, sort of out there in my, uh, in the way I present to people. Like, I just, uh, I, I sort of attack conversations. Now, uh, you probably heard about this, that term, uh, helicopter parenting. Everyone else I know hates it. I think it's lovely. Like that visual of a helicopter watching you up in the clouds. Oh, my mom's more like an Apache attack helicopter. <laughs> Earnest, endearing, and of course, well rehearsed. By the end of his frenetic 10 minute set, it's clear he nailed it. Not despite, but because of who he is. Really well. No, they, they were an awesome crowd, man. <laughs> I'm hoping that they laugh first and, and they learn second, you know? <laughs> like, I'm hoping they had a good time, but I'm hoping they retain that we can also laugh. <laughs> we being? People with Asperger's autism on the spectrum, you know? Like, we also have a sense of humor. Like, I know that's a kind of a broad idea, but that's just, um, we can also do this. You can belong as well. That's exactly, I, we can belong as well. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.